All right, how's it going everyone? Today we're gonna to be taking a look at iOS 18 beta 3 and all of the changes and bug fixes that are contained within. So the features and bug fixes that I'm gonna be going over here are just some of the more notable ones. Now there are quite a few uh, on the Apple release notes page. However, uh, in this video, just to keep it short, I'm gonna just stick to some of the more bullet points of what's changed. So to starting off, is battery now has uh, within the battery insight section under settings which i can't show because this is a, an iphone se um, but within that uh, battery insights section uh, there is now a message that will tell you uh, if an update <clears throat> is running in the background uh, that may be using more power and performance uh, that potentially may degrade your battery life and or overall system performance uh, so that's just a way to let you know that that is something that's going on in the background that you otherwise may not have already known. Okay, moving on. Uh, there is now dark mode icons for most third-party apps. Uh, so if we go over here to uh, this page, you can see the YouTube Studio app icon. All these apps from Synology, uh, the main YouTube app with the red play button in the middle of it with a dark background. <coughs> um, all of those like that all now have dark mode on them. However, as you can see straight away, there are several icons that don't have dark mode capability. Again, I'm not entirely sure how or why this is. It could be a simple bug, or it could be that the developers need to update something on their end uh, to provide the app with a dark mode option, or look rather. However, the thing is, is that some of the icons will go into dark mode if you turn on the icon tinting mode. So if we go into customize and go to tinted, uh, to where it now makes all the icons a simple uh, solid color. Uh, you can see that now that Waze icon is has the smiley face that's blue with a black background. Uh, if we go into, uh, you can see Bing also actually has a black background now. Uh, the Pulse Point app that used to be red is also now black behind it. And then that Synology B Photos icon is also dark mode, but with that blue tinted icon. So it definitely seems like it is a bit of a glitch because uh, we go back out and then you can see right there the icon changes back to uh, the standard mode when the dark mode is enabled. Next thing is a small little change in terms of the maps icon. So in beta 3, this particular one here of the maps icon, it's a lot more contrasty and easier to see and it just has more color when it's in the dark mode. Um, whereas in beta 2, uh, it was pretty dull and somewhat hard to uh, view or hard to see compared to a lot of the other icons uh, that would have bright colors and stuff on them. Uh, so the maps icon is just a little bit nicer to look at now. Uh, okay, moving on, there is now a dynamic wallpaper <clears throat> for the lock screen. So if we go into the lock screen customization menu and change the lock screen wallpaper, if we scroll all the way to the left, you can see there's now a dynamic wallpaper mode. And essentially what that's doing is it will now give you a dynamic wallpaper that will change throughout the day. So as the day progresses, uh, your lock screen wallpaper's color will change along with it. Uh, the unfortunate thing is that this is only currently available for the lock screen. Um, as far as I know, the wallpaper for the home screen cannot do this, at least uh, as of yet. Uh, maybe uh, in a future beta, Apple may add that functionality. However, as it stands now, this is only available for the lock screen wallpaper. This next one is one that I can't show since this is an iPhone SE that I am using. Uh, but this pertains to devices that have a dynamic island. And if you happen to be using the flashlight or have the flashlight enabled and are using the widget contained within the dynamic island, uh, to change the brightness as well as the width of the flashlight beam. Um, the animation for that particular control is a lot smoother and uh, more pleasing to look at. The next few, several features actually, and changes are to pertain to the control center. So if we go into control center, the first and foremost thing that is noticeable is that the contrast within this entire menu uh, has greatly improved. So all of the icons, buttons, and switches, and the various colors are all brighter 
and have more general contrast, <clears throat> making it a lot easier to see and is overall just generally more pleasant to look at. So this applies across the entire control center, so the main page here with all of your little buttons, uh, the music control page, as well as the page that has all of your connection buttons on it, uh, all have increased contrast, which does actually make it look cleaner and just nicer to look at uh, compared to Beta 2, which was kind of, I wouldn't say dull, uh, but it just wasn't as bright and or distinguishable. Uh, next, uh, within Control Center, is when you have a menu or a page that has a bunch of the buttons that have contextual menus or submenus contained within, uh, there's now little arrows on the rightmost of that particular button, letting you know that there are more actions uh, that you can access. Uh, so, for example, AirDrop, if I hit the little up and down arrow on the right side of it, it will bring out the submenu uh, to access the additional controls. And same thing goes for Wi-Fi. Uh, it just brings you to that additional Wi-Fi page. Uh, so yeah, it's just a little addition here, a visual change rather, to give you those arrows, letting you know that there are more features or buttons that can be uh, toggled. Uh, next up is screen recording has now changed the uh, wording within the button. So as you can see here in beta 3, it says screen recording recording. Uh, whereas in beta one or beta two, it said on instead of recording. So it would say screen recording on rather than now it says screen recording recording. However, in this particular instance, I don't particularly like having the word recording twice. It just seems very, very strange to have it say screen recording recording. I don't know. That's just, that's just kind of weird to me, but uh, maybe that might get changed to a different word or it might go back to the word on uh, later uh, down the line. This pertains to the control center uh, customizable menu. Uh, so the accessibility options that are contained within this menu used to live somewhere in the middle, uh, most of the menu. Now, if you scroll all the way down, uh, all of the accessibility options and or buttons are placed at the very bottom of this menu. Not sure why this is. Um, I can only assume that Apple did this because accessibility options are not generally things that most people are toggling on and off. But as you can see though, accessibility, the general ones there, hearing accessibility, motor accessibility, and vision accessibility are all pushed down here towards the bottom of this menu. And real quick before leaving the menu, as you can see, the uh, buttons that are on the bottom most of the screen seem to touch the very bottom edge of the display. Uh, at least for this particular device, uh, this is a device that has a home button on it and is this the second generation iPhone SE. Uh, so in this particular case, the buttons at the bottom of the screen are essentially touching, whereas in beta 2, they were not touching the bottom of the display. So that's a little bit of a visual discrepancy, I think, that might end up getting changed here at some point. Now going to settings and going to the control center settings, uh, there is now a little animation or a grayscale animation uh, on the right side of the screen here uh, within control center uh, settings. And essentially that's what that's doing is it shows you a depiction on what the control center looks like and effectively how to navigate it real quick. So how to go back and forth between the different pages and how to customize it and how to open and close the control center. And as you can see, it pertains to the particular device you're using as well. So this again is a device that has a home button on it. So the little display animation has a device with a home button. And now if you had a device such as one of the newer iPhones uh, that have no home button, uh, it will obviously be different and uh, depict that particular phone. Uh, next up is involving uh, emoji. So the emoji icons uh, within the emoji keyboard are a little bit bigger than they were in beta 2 and a little bit more spaced out. So you can see the icons are just more spaced out and just ever so slightly bigger than what they were previously. And you now also have a stickers section at the very, very back uh, portion of the page. And you have the Memoji section, which strangely enough, uh, you can on a non-Face ID uh, phone get Memoji stickers and Animoji stickers. So 
uh, that's cool. However, you still you cannot create an Animoji on a device that doesn't have Face ID, obviously, because it just will not work. Um, however, if you do happen to have a sticker, uh, you can actually place the sticker and or Animoji sticker or whatever uh, straight in line of the message and or uh, text that you're typing. So if you happen to have a sticker and you're in your notes app, for example, or the iMessage app or something, uh, and you want to add a sticker to the text, uh, you can place it there just like you would uh, just a standard emoji uh, within the text field. Moving on, uh, this involves RCS messaging, which I cannot, again, show on this particular device uh, because this device does not have an active cellular connection. But uh, in settings for the RCS messaging, uh, there is now a sub-menu, whereas previously it was just a, a toggle switch on the main uh, page of the messaging settings. However, there is now a sub-menu for RCS, which effectively is hinting at potential more settings regarding that particular feature. Next up, Photos app has a very slight change to the display of the search and select buttons at the top of the screen. Uh, so the search, instead of it saying search now, it is now a little blue button uh, that has a magnifying glass in the middle of it, uh, which is easier to see and has better contrast. And that's kind of the theme uh, in Beta 3 so far that I've been noticing, is that basically several aspects across the system are getting higher and just or better contrast to make things more viewable, um, which is nice. That's welcome because more contrast is a nicer uh, visual to look at. Uh, and the next set, you have that select button for selecting multiple photos uh, if you want to share or something like that. Uh, whereas in beta 2, um, that select button, you had to scroll the screen up and down uh, whichever direction to get that button to appear. Whereas now in beta 3, uh, that button, including the search button, um, are all now persistent uh, no matter where you're scrolling. This is a little bit of a change involving the scientific calculator uh, within the calculator app. Uh, so you can now switch between radius and degrees mode uh, right here in the bo uh, bottom right corner of this scientific calculator menu. Uh, and when you turn on radius, you can see at the top here it says rad. And then when you turn it off, it goes away. Um, and then if you have rad or radius on, and if you go back to the basic um, uh, calculator mode, uh, the radius little indicator will still be there, letting you know what mode you're currently in. Slight thing in the Siri settings. So if we go here to Siri settings and go to Siri responses, um, there was previously a section called Siri uh, Bluetooth, or when connected to Bluetooth car audio, rather. Uh, that section in Beta 3 is for some reason removed. Not entirely sure why Apple removed it. Maybe there's some glitch or a problem uh, that was involving this particular feature. So maybe until they fix it, uh, it will be gone for the time being, and then maybe they'll add it back in subsequent future betas. Next up, involving Siri again, uh, if you happen to ask Siri a math question, uh, you can now copy the answer to that math question and paste it anywhere uh, that you can have a text field. So and if I go back over to the Notes app, and I select paste. You can see right there, it pastes the answer uh, that was in that Siri math question and or math answer. Uh, so that's a nice little addition if you want to copy that particular text. And now uh, those are basically all of the <coughs> most notable changes. Uh, the next few things are involving some bugs uh, that I happen to notice. Uh, some of them are pretty substantial and some are just pretty annoying. Uh, first one being uh, the icons on the home screen can sometimes still go blank. And same thing goes for the settings app. Uh, these icons on the left side of the screen here can sometimes go blank and disappear. Um, if I go into the photos here, <coughs> in beta 2, where in beta 1 actually, this was not very prevalent. In beta 2, it actually made it worse for some reason. But yeah, back in beta 2, as you can see on the home screen, a lot of the, basically every one of the icons would disappear and be replaced with this kind of white checkerboard uh, icon type thing to it. And yeah, it was just a really severe glitch. And it would happen if you would select or change between 
the icon tinting mode and the icon dark mode. For some reason, going back and forth between those two modes would cause the icons to glitch out and uh, basically disappear. So that's been somewhat fixed in beta 3, but however, it does still seem to happen occasionally. Another bug is involving the heat. So the heat of the device is not great um, and has not been great even back uh, since beta 1. So heat and overheating problems, for me at least, on this particular phone have been absolutely awful. Even right now making this video, uh, the phone is significantly uh, warm and is not pleasant to hold on to. Um, and it gets even worse um, <clears throat> when you're charging the phone. So if you're charging the phone and using it at the same time, it can get really, really warm. Uh, to the point, again, like you don't want to hold on to it for too long just because of how uncomfortably warm it is. And that kind of also goes over into this next issue <clears throat> is the battery life is also pretty terrible. Um, it's a little bit better than it was in beta 2, but it is still not great. I don't get a full day, um, which is pretty, pretty abysmal uh, battery life. Uh, the overall performance is also... It's okay, but it's not great. Again, this is an older device. It's a second generation SE. But even with it being an older phone, uh, several years old, it is. it still should not lag as much as it does when I'm using it. So again, I understand that it is only in beta 3 and there are several betas to go, but <clears throat> the lag and stutter at times when trying to open control center or the notification center, or opening and closing an app, or whatever, it can be really slow at times, and just completely lag, and sometimes completely freeze, and get locked up for a couple of seconds, and then it'll catch up to itself, uh, which is just flat out ridiculous. So that is basically it uh, for this look at beta 3 for ios 18 i uh, now for the timeline for the next beta uh, i expect the next beta which should be beta 4 uh, to release within the next two to three weeks um, which should theoretically be around i would expect july 22nd or july 29th uh, one of those weeks uh, time frame dates is when i we should expect uh, iOS beta 4, iOS 18 beta 4. So yeah, that's basically it for this video. Uh, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. It's really greatly appreciated and it helps me know that you guys are enjoying my videos as well as lets the YouTube algorithm know uh, that you guys are enjoying my videos and hopefully will allow the algorithm to recommend my videos to more people. And if you guys are so inclined, uh, you can hit that subscribe button uh, that also greatly helps out the channel uh, and i'm really trying to at some point get to the goal of a hundred thousand subscribers so but yes with that all being said hope you guys have enjoyed and i will see you guys in the next one